and Eric Anderson. Um, we'll be talking about a system that we developed for helping uh, people develop pragmatic competence uh, through a vid uh, voice-driven video interface. So before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about what I mean by pragmatic competence. Um, so, so we use this definition, uh, uh, Casper uh, 1997, uh, sensitivity to meanings expressed by tone and word choice and the ability to effectively express those meanings. So to give you a more concrete example of uh, what, what this looks like, let me uh, show a video. Yeah. <laughs> so just listen to the video. Do you think it would be okay video. if I asked out your sister? Why? Why would you want to do that? Why? <laughs> well, so that if we went out on a date, she'd be there. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, as you could probably tell, uh, Phoebe didn't, wasn't literally asking why Joey might want to ask out her sister but she was actually expressing that she really didn't want him to do that. And Joey missed the point, and that's the joke, right? So um, I, I think you can see that this is important in a second language, because if you have these misunderstandings or if you're unable to uh, express what you mean uh, with tone and word choice, then uh, it, it can create problems in communication. And previous work has shown that pragmatics don't transfer very well from a, a first language to a second language, especially if the cultures are, are different. Um, and What's been shown to be the most important factor in developing pragmatic competence is exposure to a lot of diverse context um, and different scenarios, social scenarios. Uh, so unfortunately, in, in traditional classroom settings or, or many of the online settings, uh, there, there are really limited opportunities to develop pragmatic competence. There's only a few social scenarios that you really engage with in a classroom. Uh, so that, that means many students are, are uh, not developing their pragmatic competence as they're learning a foreign language. But fortunately, we have uh, a great resource freely available online for, for learning pragmatic competence. There are you know, billions of videos on YouTube in every language imaginable. And um, we, we can use these uh, to help train foreign language learners uh, to, to be more pragmatically competent. However, it's not so straightforward as just watching a video. So uh, I want to show you another video. This one is in uh, Japanese. So as you're watching this video, think about, first of all, how, how the pragmatics are different from the, the English video that I showed you. And also think about how you might learn from a video like this. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, the, the interactions are very different in, in Japanese than, than they might be in English. And the other thing I, I want, wanted you to get out of that is that uh, it, it's really hard to figure out what's going on in the video if that's, if that's all you have. Um, so that brings me to the kind of the core question of, of this work. How can we design tools to uh, help us tap into this wonderful resource that we have available online? Um, so of course, this isn't the, the, the first work in video learning for foreign language learning. Uh, there, there have been a number of studies looking at uh, different classroom assignments, uh, and many that uh, use uh, captions, augmented captions for uh, learning from videos. Um, but I, all of these uh, systems require a, an expert or a teacher to come in and uh, build these resources for students. So this creates a bottleneck in how many different uh, videos that students can engage with. And um, students might not be able to find videos that they're, they're interested in be, because the, the resources haven't been generated a lot, uh, around that particular video yet. So uh, the approach that we took is, is using a uh, speech recognition system to help learners uh, get more out of learning from any video. Um, I, I also want to point out, going back to the uh, idea of pragmatic competence, this creates a more authentic way to practice the language that people are learning from, from the videos. And it's such a simple interaction that students of any level can, can engage with videos in this way. So I'm going to take a bit of a risk here and try a uh, live demo. <laughs> uh, so this is the, the interface. It's deployed online. Um, it, it works with any, uh, any uh, video on YouTube or, or on a, uh, somebody's hard drive. So uh, let me just show you how it works. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, 
あれでもなんか変だな、えー、おかしくねあれええー、おかしくねそう、ここで見つけたのは、私が言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを言ったことを As you speak, the,、uh, the transcript of what you say、uh, appears at the bottom, and, along with a translation and, and some、uh, phonetic information for, for languages that use different scripts.、Uh, so, after we developed the system, we, we wanted to、uh, do a, a, a preliminary study to,、uh, first of all, compare this to how students might learn from videos now, and also、uh, look at how students are,、uh, react to this kind of open ended、uh, learning approach. Uh, so, we conducted a survey、uh, but before actually starting this, this project, and、uh, it turns out most students that try and learn from foreign language videos use tools like dictionaries or Google Translate to、uh, learn with the videos if there's no captions available. So,、uh, this was、uh, what we used as our、uh, other, other condition.、Um, and so, we had two, two interfaces developed the text driven interface that used the Google Translate interface. And、uh, the speech driven interface.、Uh, so, just to show you what these look like,、uh, we had a kind of a simplified version of the, the speech interface here,、uh, and this is what、uh, participants would have seen, and the、uh, text driven interface here. So, similarly to the voice driven interface, the、uh, students would just type in what they、uh, heard at the bottom, and then it,、uh, Google Translate、uh, was used to generate a translation for what was typed. We had、uh, 27 participants, and、uh, all of the participants used both interfaces, but the order in which they used the interfaces was randomized.、Uh, and each of the interfaces was used for about 10 minutes.、Um, and then we took some survey data and、uh, looked at the usage data. The, the key things that we were interested in、uh, were, first of all, the interactions with the system. So, as I talked about earlier, this is, we felt that this was a way to interact more easily with these videos more authentically. Uh, so, we wanted to just look at how many times students tried to look something up with the system.、Um, and we also wanted to look at、uh, self rated effectiveness. So, it wasn't a long enough study to do a really comprehensive measure of learning.、Uh, so, this was just a pilot study. But we did want to get a sense of、uh, how students felt about how effective the system was. So, I'll jump into the results now.、Uh, So, first of all, we, we, we noticed something interesting in terms of interactions with the system. So, those that use the speech system first、uh, actually ended up having almost twice as many interactions with, with either system、uh, as people who use the text interface first.、Uh, so, we, one possible explanation of this is that using the, this text interface was so cognitively overwhelming that students、uh, were, were already kind of worn out by the time they, they、uh, started to use the voice interface. And they, they still use、uh, the voice interface more than they use the text interface, but、um, the, the total number of interactions was about, about half.、Um, and as far as self rated effectiveness,、uh, most of the students did, did find the voice driven system to be more、uh, effective for, for learning,、uh, but this was just marginally significant.、Um, and we, we、uh, dug a little bit further into like, What, why this, some of the students preferred the,、uh, the text driven interface, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more into that in, in a second. So, I, I want to、uh, share a little bit of what we learned from the survey with you now. So, first thing is, we, we did find evidence that, that students felt like they were、uh, gaining pragmatic competence by using the system.、Uh, so, this student said, I, I know the right way to pronounce things and the context that you might use these phrases in. And this other student said, You can hear the emotion in a person's voice. And by, by interacting through the voice, they, they were able to get、uh, deeper into that language.、Um, and also, to support our previous finding, uh, uh, or support the previous、uh, finding about uh, <laughs>、um, cognitive load,、uh, we, we uh, found a, some evidence from some of the participants that they, they found it less cognitively taxing to. 
to use the voice interface. So what one student directly said that they found it, it was less cognitive overhead to type. And other students mentioned specifically that there was uh, uh, benefits in terms of spelling because it, especially in, in Asian languages where you're working with a completely different script, it can be really hard to uh, figure out how to spell words uh, when you're hearing them for the first time, but, but just speaking it out loud uh, makes that interaction much easier. So I want to talk a little bit more about limitations now. Uh, so there were challenges with the voice recognition system. So as most of you probably know, voice recognition technology is not perfect. And uh, so this student w was kind of frustrated and they, they said it was really hard for them because they had bad pronunciation. But on the other hand, uh, some students kind of liked the, the back and forth with the voice recognition system to help them improve their, their pronunciation. So they like to try uh, and repeat the words and see if the, the translation was correct and made sense. Um, and then we also had some diverging perspectives on, on open-ended learning. So uh, some of them felt like it was really overwhelming. If they've mostly been engaged in, in classroom activities, then uh, it, the new information is fed at a rate where they can uh, learn, they, they can more or less understand everything. But in this case, uh, they're dealing with native speakers, and so this person said they, they were talking so fast and I, I had no idea what was going on, even though uh, it was assumed that I could. Um, on the other hand, some students really felt like this method of learning was refreshing. So uh, this student said it was less intimidating because uh, they knew they didn't need to understand everything and they could just uh, kind of pick what they thought was interesting. Uh, so finally, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the, the goal of this project was to enable learning with, with any video. And uh, as I showed you a minute ago in the, in the demo, uh, we, we deployed the system in the, in the field uh, we called it Seiyu Seiyu, which in Japanese means voice actor, which we thought kind of captured this um, pragmatic practice element of the system. Um, and the, the system is usable, as I mentioned, with any YouTube or video from a user's hard drive. And uh, the website allows for sharing uh, these YouTube videos that learners find useful for, for learning. And uh, we also added some features that were requested for uh, feedback on correctness uh, when captions were available for those videos. So the website looks something like this. When, when you go to the homepage, uh, you see a bunch of videos that, that other students have, have uh, uploaded. And then uh, when you click on one of the videos, uh, you, you see the interface that I, that I showed you before. So we, uh, we announced the, the uh, presence of the system on, on Reddit, uh, on a couple of the different uh, language learning subreddits. Uh, we ended up with 131 participants, uh, though some of them I think had issues with the voice recognition system and uh, 71 of them spoke uh, 10 or more phrases. And, and those participants that did speak at least 10 phrases uh, averaged about 70 phrases, which is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, and uh, we, we had 28 new videos uploaded in, in uh, these three different languages. So finally, I want to conclude uh, just by talking about uh, contributions and then uh, open with a question. Um, so we developed this system for personalized language learning that can be used with any video and helps learners uh, practice pragmatic competence. Um, by deploying online, we created an opportunity for learners to uh, contribute these resources for other learners to, to learn from. And uh, this has the potential to, to, to grow uh, as more learners participate. And uh, finally, I want to open with this question, or uh, close with this question. Um, so this is one possible way to augment these uh, authentic experiences uh, that can be used for foreign language learning. But there could be other possibilities for, for augmenting uh, authentic experiences for foreign language learning. And I, I think this is a new design paradigm that hasn't been explored very much. And there's a lot of potential for us to explore that area. So thank you. Uh, I want to open up for questions. And feel free to try it at sayusayu.com. Hi, Scott Hill from the University of Oxford. Yeah. Thank you very much um, for the presentation. It looks like a, a great tool. Uh, this finding of the, the order effect on yeah. speech versus text first and that huge difference in, in the number yeah. that yeah. create. I was just curious if you broke that down by language, because it looked like you had French, um, Japanese, and languages. And I guess mm -hmm. you know the text input side of this and yeah. 
in French is probably maybe different from, from text input in, in, uh, in Japanese. Yep. That's an excellent point. Um, so actually for the user study, most of the videos were in Spanish and the, there was no uh, significant difference in the distributions of the languages between uh, text first and, and voice first. But yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Fascinating, thank you. Thank you. So um, great talk, uh, that was really interesting. Um, this project reminded me a lot of um, Project Listen um, by Jack Mostow. Okay. Um, uh. And I was wondering if you kind of, like, uh, when he was, he was doing that, um, one way that he was improving his um, speech recognition accuracy yeah. was the fact that um, when the students were reading um, the text, they knew what words they should have been saying, so then you right. can like, have more fine-grained like, feedback. Yeah. Did you like use an open grammar, or did you restrict your grammar down to certain phrases and words? Uh, so, so we use just a, a, a general speech recognition system because, we, again, we wanted it to be a, uh, to work with every video. Mm -hmm. um, when we have captions available, we did use that to improve the accuracy of the of the speech recognition system. Uh, but, but we didn't actually do any training of the, the voice recognition system uh, uh, ourselves. So, okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. If I can, I'll just ask. Um, sure. One more as well, and I, I think this difference again between text and, and speech is quite interesting in building yeah. on that, I suppose, because there's this natural air rate, air rate in speech to text. Yeah. How often could, stu could learners sort of have it wrong, but yet still see the feedback that it's right? Is there, just speculating, yeah. and I know it's yep. beyond the, the scope of, of this paper, but just thinking about right. that modality of, of speech input and the extent to which um, you will get correct answers or you might say something wrong but still think it's correct. Right, that's a great point. Um, so just anecdotally, that it's pretty rare that there are two things that sound similar enough and fit in the context of what's going on in the video. Um, so that's, uh, like, like you mentioned, a great place to expand for future work. Uh, but yeah, anecdotally, it, it doesn't happen very frequently. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tammy Clegg from the University of Maryland, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's really cool that, that you made the system so that you can choose any video. Mm -hmm. um, but I was wondering, are there certain types of videos that are better for pragmatic learning than other types? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a great question. Um, uh, so again, I, I can't give you much more than, than anecdotal. <laughs> uh, uh, so people, Live action videos, I think, tend to, to work a bit better because then you're seeing all of the subtleties of uh, y you know, how people actually interact. The, the cartoons are sometimes more fun for students, but uh, then you're not seeing the facial expressions and the body language. Uh, and uh, naturally, the setting of the video is important too. So if you have something set in like ancient China, then that may not be real pragmatically relevant to uh, how we interact today. Uh, but again, like I wanted, uh, the, the hope was that students could find videos that were really engaging for them, um, and that way, e even if they're learning something that's not necessarily exactly relevant to today, they're, they're still engaging in learning the language. Yeah, thank you.